Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be talking about mastering funk music. We'll be looking at a mastering session step by step as we discuss the different forms of processing that are being used. Additionally, we'll listen to a mastering process multiple times throughout, so stick around for the full video. But first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. Now before we get started with the actual mastering, it helps to understand what makes funk music unique sonically. Funk music is comprised of primarily percussive elements. The bass guitars, the guitars, or other instruments that are typically used melodically work in tandem with the drums and percussion. And with that in mind, funk music is heavily dependent on precise timing of all instruments used in the composition. The percussive aspect of the music can be emphasized during mastering by introducing specific impression, limiting, and equalization settings. So with that in mind, let's start by looking at how to equalize a funk master. When using equalization on a funk master, it's best to affect the frequencies that emphasize the percussive nature of the mix. Now, some of these changes will be additive and some are going to be subtractive. Although the exact frequencies that you affect will depend on the mix that you have, there are some good starting points for your equalization. Now, for this example that we're about to cover, you'll need to use a mid-side equalizer. One good step that you can take is to ensure that the bass and kick are mono or in the center image. So using the mid-side equalizer that I mentioned, create a high-pass filter on the side image and place it around 130 Hz. Now this will attenuate any frequencies on the side image that are lower than this point. Essentially, this will accomplish a mono low frequency range, causing your kick and bass to be powerful and centered. This also separates these frequencies from other ones in the side image, adding clarity and punch to your master. Using a critical ear, you can use the same method for other frequencies in your master. Attenuate aspects of the side image to see if it causes masking to anything in the mono or mid image and vice versa. Let's listen to this in practice. Next, let's cover how to compress a funk master. When compressing a funk master, it's imperative that the transients of the mix are retained. Now this is accomplished by using specific attack and release settings. Furthermore, it helps to set these attack and release times to be in tempo with the track. So what does this look like practically? Well, you can see on a compressor that you have various settings, including but not limited to threshold, ratio, knee, look ahead in some compressors, and some other features. Now you also have two functions called attack and release. The attack determines how long it takes before the compressor will begin to compress the signal that crosses the threshold. The release determines how long the compressor will hold on to the signal after the signal has crossed the threshold. Now with that in mind, the attack and release can really affect the transients of a mix and in turn the timbre and clarity of the mix. For example, a short attack and a long release means that the compressor will compress sooner and for longer. This means that any transients like the snare, the kick, toms, or maybe the pluck of a guitar, basically any percussive instrument or aspect of the mix will be compressed and attenuated. As a result, it will be less perceivable and will detract from the overall percussive nature of the mix. That's why it's best to use a longer attack and shorter release time when applying compression to a funk master. Additionally, the attack and release settings of compressors should be set to be in time with the tempo of the track. Now this will cause the compression to occur in time with the track, in turn making it sound more musical and a little bit less noticeable. Now some compressors have a built-in sync or in-time function, but if yours doesn't, simply divide 60,000 
by your BPM, and you'll have the time of a quarter note in milliseconds. Use this time and divisions or multiples of it to set the attack and release of your compressor. Now let's listen to the compression after the previously mentioned EQ was applied. Next, let's cover how to add harmonics to a funk master. To add harmonics to your master, simply insert an analog emulation plugin on your mix to create these harmonics. Now, some plugins are better suited for this purpose than others, one example being the Softube Harmonic Saturation Pro, which offers multiple harmonic formations, a dynamic section, and some more functions that allow you to hone in on your distortion. Another personal favorite is the FabFilter Saturn, which can be used for a multitude of purposes, but is primarily designed to emulate various amps. Now, to my ears, this is one of the best analog emulation plugins available. Be sure not to use saturation and harmonic generation plugins excessively, as they can compress the mix and may cause noticeable unwanted distortion if driven too much. Let's listen to our master with all the previous steps included and the harmonic generation included as well. Next, let's discuss how to apply limiting to a funk master. When applying limiting to a funk master, it's alright to push the signal a little bit, but excessive attenuation and brick wall limiting should definitely be avoided. Aim for about 3 dB of attenuation, and hopefully less if the right amount of compression was used earlier on in the signal chain. And when it comes to mastering funk music, retaining the dynamics means retaining the percussive aspect of the music. To do so, use attack and release times similar to what you used on your compressor. Now that is, use times that are in tempo with your track's BPM and utilize a longer attack and moderately shorter release. Additionally, you can use a limiter that has algorithmic settings, now some of which are perfect for retaining dynamics or punch in a recording. Let's make this master a little bit louder by pushing it to roughly negative 10 LUFS. Now let's hear the effect limiting has on the master. Lastly, let's cover how to use Parallel Compression on a Funk Master. Parallel Compression is a fantastic tool for taking the quieter aspects of the signal and pushing them into more perceivable territory. When mastering funk music, you can increase the detail of the master by subtly introducing the Parallel Compressed signal back in with the original and unaffected signal. So to do this, follow these simple steps. Step 1. Create a bus send for your Stereo Mixes track. Set this send to unity or 0 dB. Step 2. Insert a compressor on the parallel auxiliary channel and heavily compress the signal. Be sure to use a longer attack and shorter release time to preserve dynamics. And Step 3. With your signal compressed, slowly blend the compressed signal back in with your original unaffected signal. This way you can create a balance between your dynamic signal and the heavily compressed low-level signal of the parallel compression. Let's listen to all these forms of processing that we've added from the beginning and include the parallel compression. Now keep in mind that you may use more or less processing on your master as this is just a rough guide. Additionally, be sure not to follow exactly what we're doing here since you'll need to use different settings 
given the unique nature of your mix, but let's take a listen to it regardless. So these are our thoughts on mastering funk music, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you got to do is set up this short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video, or you can make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.